Simone, and I am sitting with Grammy award-winning James Worthy. What's going on, baby? What's up, baby? What's good? Working, man. 2019. Okay. Facts. So here, here's what I have to say first before we get into anything. First, What's up? congratulations. Thank you for your Grammy nomination with Travis Scott for Sickle Mode. Yeah. So yeah. is this the fifth or the sixth one for you? This is the fifth. This is the fifth. Okay, yeah, I was confused because I know we talked that it was going to be the fifth that you've yeah. been nominated five times, but mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was adding to. Yeah, that's that's the fifth one right Check there. Check you out. Yeah. So of course y'all was um, nominated for the best rap group. Um, excuse me, best rap album yeah. of the year. Yeah. And Cardi won that. She did. She did. Shout out to Cardi, man. I love Cardi. I love Cardi too. Yeah. Like I was, I was really happy for her. You know, I really was glad to see her win. But for she the, works. She does. She's working her butt off. Facts. I'm like, I need to get that grind up. <laughs> God. So how did you feel, though, when they called her name um, um, winning I mean, that particular category? I mean, if I was happy, but I mean, me personally, I don't think it should have one best rap album. Um, because for me, I'm from New York. You know, we, we, we from up top, so we take rap serious. Right. So over Victory Lap, over, you know, Pusha T... I kind of thought those albums should have won, you know. So let me say this because I agree with you as far as lyric lyricism, because that's yeah. what I think you're talking about yeah. mainly. Um, but for Cardi, one thing that stands stands out because somebody had to actually put this point in my head too, because I agree with you. I was right. like, I would prefer having her have the best album of the year. Yeah. Because I think that that's something that's better for her, a better fit for her. Yeah, um, I agree. But one thing that she did do, she touched a whole different culture. Yeah, she crossed over. She crossed over. She, she crossed did over. a big crossover. So I feel like, you know, after you say that and think of that part, like her touching South America. Yeah. It's just like, ah. Well, that's why I was saying I it should have been it. the album of the year because it was a big album and she touched so many different lanes. You know, yeah. she crossed over. You know, she's working with Bruno Mars. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, you know, that ain't rap. Facts. You know, that's more pop lane. So, you know, I'm happy that she won because I think she deserved a Grammy. I really do. I do too. But in that category, not really. Well, first and foremost, would you like to work with Cardi? Yeah. Or have you worked with Cardi? Because I mean, I you haven't. work with everybody. I, I haven't worked with Cardi. Cardi, uh, holla at me. Holla at me. Holla at me. <laughs> uh, let's work, man. Um, I, I like Cardi, man. I think she's dope. Mm -hmm. Um... She has a dope team. Um, you know, I think we'll make something great. I do too. Yeah. Because I just feel like you've worked with Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown Jr., Young Bird, um, Travis Scott, CME. You've worked with a lot of people, yeah. period. And you're just, you could tell that you're versatile. Right. And it just seems like when you listen to a James Worthy record, right, I can't say that, oh, off the rip. I can't be like, oh, that's James Worthy. That's his song. It's like every person that you work for it, or every person that you produce for let yeah. me say that it's like you make the sound specifically Specific, for yeah, that yeah. artist and that's that's always been my mindset like I never wanted to be the guy to where like everything sounded the same right I can't stand it you know what I mean because there's no growth there's no longevity you know like I want you, when you when you listen to my music and my catalog I want you to be like dang he done took it from here to there to there you don't know what's coming next. Exactly. I get that. So if I'm an artist, right, and I come to you, what is that process when it comes to mm. putting the beat together and the sound together to fit that artist? It's it's, it's tricky sometimes, mm -hmm. but, but then not really because I'm just about the vibe. Like, I have to really vibe and mesh with the artist that I'm working with. Like, if, if I don't really feel the connection, it's just not going to work, period first and foremost. But if we do have the connection, I have to get into your world. So I have to figure out what your voice is, what works for your voice. You know, do we need to have a record that's broadening? If you're a singer, if, if do you need to sing high pitch? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be mellow tone? Do we need fast pace? Do we need slow pace? You know, does it need to be a certain genre? But also, I just make what I feel. Gotcha. So if I feel, hey, we need to take it 90s R&B feel. Let's do that. If we need to go pop R&B, let's take it there with a twist. You never know. 
you hear a lot of producers, and the first thing you hear is their name on the beat. Mm-hmm. You don't hear that for James. I don't. James doesn't. I'm, do not, that, a, okay? I'm not a fan <laughs> of tags. Like I like them, right? But for me, I never wanted to do that. Like I always wanted to keep like the the mystery. So let me ask you this because you really look up to Kanye, yeah, um, and Q Tip. Yeah, shout out to Q. I, shout out to Q. Shout out to Travis <laughs> Quest. I know you got a story True. somewhere. Tribe, it's my boys. It's my boys. So I, looking into those um, producers, what? How does that inspiration translate over into your creativity? Well, I mean, if you just know Tribe mm-hmm. music, I mean, that's just no brainer. Like, if you're <laughs> from New York, how would you not like Tribe Quest? Like, right. I mean, Bonita Applebaum. Midnight Marauders, that's enough said. You Can know? I kick it? Can I kick it? What's the scenario? Electric relaxation, a war <laughs> tour, like, come on, man. But, I mean, they were, like, the group that really, of course, they put the soul in hip-hop, mm-hmm. but they were the first one to introduce jazz into hip-hop. hip-hop. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so dope because jazz is more of a soul vibe. Right, mm-hmm. and you can feel the energy when you hear tribe records. Like you can tell where they were at at that time. You could feel the energy. You could feel the soul, even what they were talking about. Right, you know, like like that Low in Theory one. was that that Low in Theory album was just like it was just something I never heard before, and it just really resonated with me. I was like, man, like that's that's the level that I want to make musically, like. When, even when I talk about it, it, it makes me happy is because, you know, it wouldn't be a James Worthy. It wouldn't be a Kanye if it wasn't for them. I agree with that because Elsa Gundo is my song. Elsa, 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 Elsa Gundo, Gundo is like actually I love one of video. my favorites. I love the video. Like, Elsa <laughs> Gundo is one of my favorites. It's like you make this whole song about losing your wallet in Elsa Gundo. Just Who loses their wallet in, in Elsa, Elsa Gundo? Gundo. <laughs> You said it be like, <laughs> if, of course. No, let's get back to Kanye though, because you did say that you yeah. look up to Kanye. Yeah. Now, now listen, we talking old Kanye, a new Kanye. Mm. There is levels. There, it is levels to <laughs> Kanye. You know, college um, dropout Kanye. Or... Okay. Okay. We are gonna get into it. Okay. Tell me what's going on with Kanye. Okay. So we got college dropout Kanye. Okay. Now that's my favorite. Now. Kanye. It's, it, People would argue that that's their favorite Kanye, right? Right. Okay. Now, me personally, I don't necessarily have a favorite Kanye. Okay. I think that there's different phases of Kanye that I like. <laughs> right? Right. So, college, college dropout Kanye. I love that Kanye because he's always sampling stuff. He's always putting samples in music, right? But that was the point to where it was like... You can automatically tell it was just a sample off the rip, you right. know. But the way he just did it production wise was just really, really dope. And he was talking his ish <laughs> on the <laughs> records. Agree. As he always Agreed. does, but it was just a different time with him, you know. Polo Kanye, backpack Kanye, you know, Jordan uh with the skinny jeans Kanye. Right. You know, that was that time. But I felt like he was more conscious at that time too, with that all too, falling down. That too. You know what I mean? He, like he was. He he was more connect he was more connected to us and more relatable to us. Especially with the visuals. Exactly. Especially with the visuals. I, I agree with that. But as time went on, you know, late registration came out, great album. He was still in that conscious mode still. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, touch the sky, you know, all of that, right? Right. So when he transitioned to graduation, that's when I really, really became a big Kanye fan mm-hmm. because I just felt like the creativity was such at a high level, even to the to the graphic part. Right. You know, just that that cover art. I just love just the artwork. You know, because it, it really went into the whole project. But can't tell me nothing. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. That's one of the best songs ever made. Mm-hmm. And y'all can argue with me if y'all want. Can't tell me, can't tell me nothing is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. That's right? the best almost ish talking, but real talking I've ever heard on a record. Last year, with all the shenanigans, everything that was going on with Kanye, yeah. did it make you question your love for Kanye at any point last year with the whole slavery was a choice and 
like wearing the mega hat and did that make you question him anyway mm. or make you kind of question yourself like why do I actually look up to him hmm. a couple of different things so I thought that he went about all of what he was saying the wrong way mm -hmm. I do um I don't all the way disagree on everything that he said right um now the whole slavery thing is a choice there's two sides to look at it i don't think that he should have said it like that right but also i mean technically a lot of them did have a choice mm -hmm. you know like we we just can't sit up here and say that people didn't have a choice at all like granted that time was a pivotal time in slavery and it wasn't a lot of choices, but they had a choice to go and run away or, or go this way or be held captive and, and have a slave owner. You gotcha. just had to, you know, live with the repercussions. Well, I felt like when I watched that interview, um, I, I think that everybody took it too literal. That's what I was that's I, what I, I think thinking. everybody took that a little bit too literal and kind of took what he said and just ran with it. Right. And I felt like, I don't think he was necessarily saying that slavery is a choice. Because Kanye, when you think of Kanye, Kanye like rants a lot. Right. And he can articulate himself. But sometimes the way he articulates himself goes over it, exactly. people's heads. Exactly. So for that comment, I don't really think he meant it like slavery was a choice. Yeah, I, think I, I don't meant, think he like, meant harm with it. I think he meant it was a mental captivity. I, I agree. I agree. And that's why, you know, I didn't really feel... A type of way. Right. I just didn't like exactly how he went about it. Got you. But you know, Kanye is Kanye. You know, he gonna say what he feel, what's on his mind. Right. That's just him. And some people don't like it. Some people agree. You know, people agree to disagree. Right. But I like him because he's bold. I like him because he says what's real. I like him because he go against the grain and he says what's what people aren't gonna say. Right. You know what I mean? Like in this game, everybody is so pigeonholed on what they should say, what's, what they shouldn't say, or, oh, that's going to, you know, people are going to say this about me, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's going to have an opinion about you. Right. Everybody's going to say something, but it's up to your mind and your mindset to be like, I don't care what y'all think. Gotcha. I know what I feel in here. That's the most important. And that goes back to me. When I make the music that I make, it comes from here. Right. I'm not about chasing the popularity or or making what's popular because I want some quick money or I want to be hot right now. My longevity is what make makes me hot. You know what I mean? I agree. Like, for example, like I can I can work with the hottest of them all, from Kendrick Lamar to Lil Pump to Uzi to all of them, but What's going to make me last to to where I can see and hear James Worthy 10 years from now? So let's get into your artistry, okay? Cause let's do it. At the end of the day, like you work for a lot of people. Right. But you hit a point in your, your career where it's like, I'm ready to focus on myself solely as right. an artist. Right. What made you make that decision? Um, well, I always wanted to be in artistry. But, you know, you got to get your foot in the door, right. you know, uh, throughout the industry and, and just soaking up game and, and getting a catalog together. You know, all of that stuff takes time. Right. So I just felt this is the right time for me because, you know, I've done a lot, um, work with a lot of people and, and I've soaked up so much from being in the back that I'm like, I already know how to move. So now it's just that pivotal point to where I need to take things to the next level. And, you know, that's what birth what I'm here now. Exactly. So let's talk about the EP Blue Leisure. Blue Leisure. It just dropped. Now here's my thing, because I was like, why name it Blue Leisure? Yeah. What was the thought process in coming up with that name? Well, blue is my favorite color. Okay. Yeah, it's a tranquil color. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really into energy and moods. Right. So and blue is, blue is like mood. a real chill, calm mood to me. So I put leisure with it because it's almost the same um, feel as in leisure is more of a a relaxation, mm -hmm. a letting go type of feeling that you get. So I just kind of put it together and I wanted something to be fresh, something catchy, something new. 
and some to go over your head. You right. Know, blue leisure, what, what does that mean? So I want you to go and really see the meaning behind it. So that's why I call it that. And, you know, just I wanted something that really resonated with me because, you know, we live in a crazy time. I'm in a crazy business. We all need leisure. That's so true. this project was therapy for me. That makes sense. See, I told you it was a whole subliminal creativity there. Yeah. And here, like, here's where I figured it was more to it than just the EP. When you listen to the music, it's like the first song, Blue. Yeah. Starts off at a slow tempo. Then mm -hmm. the next song goes to a fast tempo. Yeah. Then a slow tempo, fast tempo. And that was very intentional. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's that, like that goes, wave. You exactly. It's that, that wave. wave. It's right yeah. that wave. Exactly. So let's first of all, let's just start with Blue. Um to being like for that being the first song. Yeah. Before the cameras cut on. I was <laughs> saying that, you know, and for Blue, it seemed like you were saying that you were overcoming something and it got to a point in your career where it's like you're happy now that you can focus on yourself. Yeah. Why name that blue? Like you said, you know, it's it's talking about overcoming some things and also uh being with somebody where you have to overcome some things with that person as well. And with blue, um you know, just going back into the meaning of the project, um, it's still that form of letting go. Right. Of uh, that that expression of just that therapy of okay, I, I just gotta get it out of my system. I gotta I gotta just release it. So that's why I called it blue because it starts off with the release, and then I'm going into other topics and situations that I'm talking about in the other songs to where now you understand the story. That's true, because then we get into love and high levels. Actually, right. after Blue, we go into how many times? No, I know, I know. Yeah. We, I know we go into how many times with uh, Tony Terry. With the legendary Tony Terry. Tony Terry. <laughs> okay, first of all, my mama conceived me to Tony really? Terry. Really? No, I don't know that for real, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Tony, you making babies out here, bro. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it goes into the story. Right. You know what I mean? And I just want to go ahead and jump into love and high levels yeah. because... For that record, I felt like that was the pivotal moment for you because it's like, in that song, you're saying, I'm no longer going to get looked over. Right. I'm I'm betting on myself, like, period. Right. All, everything is about me. First, you say, if you're not down with the team, you got to pay my fee. For real. Then you said, I, you said I'm not <laughs> capping. But I always knew I was the man. Yeah. So what experiences have you had in the industry to make you want to even make a song like that? I mean, industry, politics, um... People just not doing what they're supposed to do within the team. Uh, you know, just just a lot of stuff that you in, endear um, just in through passing and experiences. Right. And I just wanted to talk about it because, you know, I don't really talk about a lot of that within, you know, my, my life or on social media or wherever you see me. I don't really talk about it a lot. So I just wanted to put it into music and just have people just look through a different scope of who I am and, and the stuff that I go through. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's a new journey for me. Right. So I want, I want people to be a part of it. Now let's get into like the video for Love and High Love. Right. Cause you all, it was you featuring <laughs> your plaque. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, we, we, we had to stunt a little bit. I see. Yeah. I saw like, yeah. I mean, it was just. We had to stunt. Walking down the street with his plaque, you know, if you, you didn't know, check that out, I'm, check that out now. You know, walk, walking straight down <laughs> this this random street, I'm holding it up. Plaque was bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, but that's that was a accomplishment for me. True. You know, um, I'm not one of the people out here who's gassing up like, I've been an artist for five, ten years. Like, I'm literally a new artist to a lot of people, right? Gotcha. A lot of people know me from being a producer and a writer. But now I'm stepping out in the forefront. So for me to get as many streams as I did on my first major single, I'm like, yeah, that's got to be documented. I get it. Because I was going to definitely ask you, like, why not make a treatment that showcased the difficult situations that you've experienced thus far? But yeah, why not document Why not? Why not? But also, too, that video transitions to the next video. Which so is with the next video, so I'm excited gonna about be a Glow. whole storyline. <laughs> no, but I'm seriously excited about Glow because I just feel like although you're talking about a female on Glow, yeah, it's not about a female. I feel like what that was think? shots it was to shots. the industry. You know, a little, little bit of shots. 
Um, a little bit, a little bit. See, we, we it was here. we here, you know, we, we're here, <laughs> we're that? vibing, you know. <laughs> I, ca I caught on, I caught on, which would take me into Oceans, yeah, because Oceans with Kalina, Dirty Money, Bad Boy, okay, yeah. take that, yeah. take that, you know, take that. But even with Oceans, right? Oceans is a self explanatory record, right? But I don't think that Oceans was really, it's not about the record. I felt like the name itself represented the project yeah. from the waves yeah. from the blue to the to the oceans i felt like the oceans was pretty much another subliminal yeah it, it, it definitely project. was i mean actually you know the science of it when you get to oceans oceans is it's like it's like the um the pivotal point of the release so i'm telling you guys about all these experiences I'm telling you all these stories, and then once you get to oceans, it's kind of like the boom. Like, like now I kind of understand what he was trying to convey and say throughout the whole project. Gotcha. So when you actually get to the last song, which is "Move," now it's like cele celebratory. Exactly. And and talking about moves, you you stated you know, in other situations and other conversations. Right. That you enjoy working with artists from the 90s and older. Yeah. And for this particular record, you put DJ Ecstasy from Houdini on it. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to X. Now, the obvious choice for this would have just been to go with a reggae artist. Right. Of course, because it's a reggae feel, it's a reggae vibe. But what was that interaction between you and X to say, you know what? This is perfect. X is perfect for this. Well... I'm a huge Houdini fan, mm -hmm. huge. Um, I always tell X this all the time. He probably gets tired of me telling him this story, <laughs> but Houdini actually inspired some of my early work as a producer, as right. me producing uh, and getting placements. Just their sound kind of inspired my sound. Mm -hmm. So when I got the opportunity to just meet him and you know just be around Houdini, I'm like. I mean, you guys are legends and y'all are like my heroes. Right. So I'm like, I'm just in awe of just being around them and just having that relationship. But having them on the record was just an honor. So I'm like, why not? And um, I mean, just the first day I met X, like we we literally recorded his, his verse <laughs> the day I met him, which I'm like... That's super X epic. A cool guy. And like, he's X super cool. Super cool. Like, I mean, I, I tell him all the time, like, I got so much respect for him because, you know, he's he literally has been like a big bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, since the day I met him, he's been always A1. He didn't even have to do the record, but he was a fan of me. And he was a fan of the song. And I'm like, you know what, that speaks volumes. Right. You know what I mean? And just for him to to want to have the opportunity to get on a song. And I'm like, absolutely. It was my way of bridging the gap. Right. It was my way of doing something that's not the normal and having a legend on the song. Exactly. Like, why not? Why not? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I love Move because, first of all, when the beat comes on, you could literally be sitting there doing absolutely nothing. It just makes you move. But the beat <laughs> makes you move. Yeah. So obvious choice to name the song Move. Absolutely. But it's just something about how X hops on the record. Who that is? It's like, okay, yeah. X, like, oh, like, you know, you get into but the But I you told really him, I said, it. look, you got to get in your bag when you get on this <laughs> verse. Because it's such a high energy song already right. that you got to bring that extra and energy. And he brought the and energy. And he brought it. Like, I'm telling you, before that day, mm -hmm. when we recorded that verse, he hadn't been in the studio forever. <laughs> so when he laid that down, you, you, couldn't, you tell. couldn't tell. You couldn't tell. But when he laid that verse, I'm like, yeah, this is that time. This is that time. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So, and then I just got to talk about my favorite record real quick. Call on me. Call on me. Sona Relay, <laughs> London recording Shout artist. Shout out to Sona, man. That's the homie. She's amazing. I, I Okay. This is my favorite record because, first of all, you guys had so much chemistry on this song. Thank you. Thank you. Like, so much chemistry. And it's almost like... When I listen to the song, it's like you guys brought something out of each other. Right. Yeah. It was that was the goal. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted I didn't want to do like the um, the typical duet. Right. I kind of just wanted to be different in arrangement. I wanted it to be just a different vibe. The song is already kind of of a different bop. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, 
people, you know, a lot of people just didn't realize that I would do a song with with someone like her. Right. But also, too, it's just a different sound. And what she brought to it, you know, when I f- initially heard her vocals, I'm like, it's just so beautiful. You know, right. her, her, her her voice is so, so beautiful. So beautiful, it is. And I'm like, I got to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to bring it. So, you know, we bounced off of each other, you know, and, and I think the balance was was really there. I do. I, yeah. I love that song. Oh, Thank I love you. that Thank song. Thank you. A lot of people like that song. So, I mean, I'm trying to see a video for that song. It's coming. Okay. It's coming. Um, you, to be honest with you, I'm trying to see a video for all for the entire EP. Because I think that's the, the goal. EP was that eclectic that, yeah. that you could do that. I, and that's the goal. You know, the goal is to really have um, a visual project. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the goal. So, of course, we have Love and High Levels video. Glow video is coming soon. Um Ocean's video is coming soon. Of course, the move video is coming soon. So it's going to be a lot of visuals. It's going to be a movie. It's going to be a movie. It really so, is. It really is. So I'm definitely I'm excited. coming to the Glow uh, shoot for oh sure. Gosh, I'm definitely going to be there. It's going to be crazy. Definitely. <laughs> so um, to wrap things up, right? The EP, this is your debut. This is EP, my debut. Right? And you put your trust in upcoming producers yeah. like uh, Rob Beats yeah. and uh, Frisk Tracks. Frisk Tracks. Uh, also, I don't want to forget them. Motif, uh, Brainiac Beats, mm-hmm. and also uh, Ronell Sussums. Dope guys. Dope. I mean, y'all, you guys did a great job collectively. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for this to be your debut, which is something that I love about you, the reason that I love you, because yeah. you're just so humble and you're willing to really work with anybody yeah. that, that show improves. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? And that's one thing I truly love you. But what made you say, I have to work with these guys? Like, Because you could have um, worked with anybody. Well, actually, um, I had already worked with Frisk Tracks before. Um, mm-hmm. He actually produced my debut single, which was Blue Sunsets. So mm-hmm. he's the one that produced that. So we already had a vibe going on. We had a relationship. So, you know, I said I definitely want him to work on Blue Leisure, of course. Right. Um, Ronell Sessoms, dope guy. Uh, he's the one that produced Glow. Right. And um, when I heard the track, I'm like... It's just an amazing track. It's just a different vibe. It is. It's, it's a different vibe. It's so many different elements in the track. And I'm like, I I have to have it. I have to have it. So shout out to uh, Ronell, um, Motif, and um, and Brainiac. Those are actually producers that work under Frisk Tracks as well. So, um, you know, I just want to give them an opportunity. So actually, they're the guys that worked on Call On Me as well. That. So yeah, man. Y'all did a good job with comedy. Yeah, <laughs> man. And, and of course, you know, the rest of the project's produced by Rob Beats. You know, he's a dope producer as well. So we just collaboratively, you know, put made it Y'all done. Made a masterpiece. Yeah, I appreciate that. Y'all really made a masterpiece. Like I could see this being an album more so than an EP. And you that's know, just and the album is coming. It's, it's I know that's an album. Is that the next project? Actually, this is exclusive right here. Okay. Nobody knows. This Nobody yet. knows. This. The next project will be another EP. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a part two of Blue Leisure, which the title of this, and nobody knows this. You get an exclusive. Ooh. The name of the next project is called The Blue Tape. Oh, the blue why tape. the blue tape? The blue tape. So, it's, it's of course, it's a play off of Blue Leisure. Mm-hmm. But I want this next project to feel almost like an album, but not really. So, I want it to have the feel of mixtape and album got you to prepare to for prepare an album. for an album got you that makes sense so it's 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 kind of like how jaden smith did his projects mm-hmm. so how he came out with sire and then he came out with the sunset tapes right so with him it's it's almost it was almost a play off of sire mm-hmm. for me all these new songs that i'm working on are just a collection of just vibes that maybe I couldn't have put on Blue Leisure, that who that it may could go on the album, or it may go on this new one. But these <laughs> are, are just a collection of vibes that I've been working on for a long time. You know, look, I heard right a little birdie uh-oh, told uh-oh, me uh-oh, uh-oh. that it's somebody that might be on this next uh next project, the Blue Tape. Can I can I drop a name? What you got? Who? What can you I, heard? What you heard? I heard J Cole. Me and Cole working on some stuff. We we working. We working. Okay. Um, I'm definitely working on some new Cole stuff just for Cole. 
But me and Cole are working on some stuff for me as well. Look at that. So I'm not going to say that it's going to be on the blue tape. Okay. But we are working. Okay. We are working. So shout out to J. Cole. So for the blue, for Blue Leisure, let's get back onto Blue Leisure. Yeah. Um, this is your debut. Right. You said that with this being um, your first your first debut as an artist. Right. This is one of the, this is where you were able to be your most creative. Right. What do you want people to take from it? And what is, like like I said, what is the outcome? And is it really serving its purpose right now? Well, when I initially began working on the project, it wasn't really a lot of expectations. It was just that I wanted to make something that I felt was good. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make the music that I wanted to make. And, you know, I kind of knew that people would appreciate it because of the success I had off the singles already. Right. But, you know, I just kind of took things to a different level uh, when I got more in depth with the project. But once the project came out, I mean, the reception, the re love, the love, I mean, it's been amazing. Right. I mean, you you came to the EP release. To the EP release, which was and phenomenal. it was just amazing. The love, like I, everybody I just, that was there. I couldn't believe it. Like, I mean... Was you not expecting that outcome, though? I mean, you know, I expected it to be a good outcome, mm -hmm. but just the it was amount of people that came and, and the support... And even just for it to be the next day after the project came out, like literally, like it was just amazing, you know, because it's it's my first go around and it's my debut project. And sometimes you don't really know what the response is going to be, you know, right. when, when you're a new act and, you know, it's just your first project. Like I didn't really understand what it would be yet. I just hoped that it would have been great. Right. But when I saw it, you know, from my own <laughs> eyes, I'm like, wow, like, this is just amazing to me. Right. And it just kind of gave me the scope of, I know what to do now. Like, I know that people are paying attention, people are watching, people are listening. And just from that day alone, it's just been nothing but just elevation after that. See, I love this. I love seeing this glow up. You know what I mean? I love seeing it. Now everybody else is going to see it. Watch glow. So right. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> so I love seeing this glow up. And uh, for people that want to follow you and want to actually go check out the EP after watching this, yeah. you know, yeah. watching us, vibe out about it. Tell them where they can follow um, you. Um, Go get the EP. It's available everywhere, every streaming platform, anywhere you can get music. Mm -hmm. Spotify, Tidal, Google Play, um, Amazon iTunes, anywhere, anywhere you can get it. And uh, hit the follow button, King James Worthy, on all social media. And I'll follow you back if you don't act crazy. You, you know, know, some people, you know, <laughs> some yeah, some people crazy people online. You, know. <laughs> you got to You got to keep it. Keep it nice. You know, keep it professional, but keep it nice. Because he's a humble guy, y'all. He's really humble. Yeah, I'm not so crazy, man. I'm, follow I'm him. Cool. He definitely follow me. I'm back. a laid back guy. Definitely. <laughs> but definitely thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No, you know, I, you. you know, I love you. Like, I love you know, you so much. Y'all need to make sure y'all support this girl, man. <laughs> Kay Simone, she out here getting it, man. I'm See, telling you. He's just, listen, he's, he's gassing it. No BP, okay? Come on, man. She's, you gassing it. She need to gas <laughs> herself, man. I'm telling you, she out here working. Appreciate you. No problem. Well, definitely, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. But uh, letting me be a part of this journey. Like I I love you know what? And, being and a part of this journey. I I appreciate you so much because you know you've like you say, you're here um in the beginning of the journey. You know what I mean? Like we we had phone calls about you know, this, you yesterday. know? like like yesterday. we talk about it. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know, like so you know Pop up at the you studio. know what it is. Exactly. You know what it is. So I appreciate you for being a part of the journey and, and being part of the process. Because you know, sometimes it's it's a hard road, it and is. you gotta have people that understand the vision, you know. So I appreciate you. Keep, continue to do what you do. Continue to make Definitely. the music that you make, and just continue to be who you are. Absolutely. Because being who you are is was really pushing you. Definitely. Definitely. You got to be yourself at yes, all times. Definitely. But thank you guys, and thank you so much, James. Thank appreciate you. you. Appreciate you.